Okay, Al Pacino here. We're gonna give Ellie a call. Here we go. Who are calling now? Still calling. Who is this kid? Buongiorno. Al Pacino, how you doing? <laughs> Good, how are you? Ellie, so what are you gonna yes. do tomorrow? You gonna eat some lesbian ass? <laughs> Carpet. So how's your big date coming along? <laughs> You're making it do so much bigger deal. Oh God, of course I am. <laughs> Shut up, I don't hit the music. What? Okay, hit the music. <laughs> Well, you kind of admitted it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you got a date planned for tomorrow with a girl coming over to your it's house, not, cooking dinner. It's not dinner. a fucking date. I don't date, dude. Well, you're going to be scissoring like you wouldn't believe, like old Michael <laughs> Corleone. Um, did you, did you send her your phone. squirt videos at least? Oh, my God, Ethan. No. <laughs> See the incriminating actions of a young woman. It's got all Al Pacino rolled up. Beryl, can you put Ethan on, please? It must be doing a podcast. How dare you! <laughs> you dirty fucking brummy cunt. <laughs> Hi, it's the Two Minute Terminator. I'm Ethan McKinnon. We've already hit the music. <laughs> hey! Al had to leave. Sadly, there's only one seat in this room, and uh, it's got to be for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who are? Who are? How you doing? Are you all G'd up? Oh, shit. I haven't even set the clip up. What episode are we doing? <laughs> Fuck it, Al. Uh, I think it's episode 34. We are going from... <laughs> Fuck. Okay. 64 minutes to 68 minutes. Ooh. I think you no, might 64 be to 66, there. sorry. Okay. Well, I, 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 I guess I could do a cut here. It's two minutes in. It's 33, you mook. Is it? Yeah, it's 64 to 66. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the stunt driver's head can be seen out of the black back window. And it's I didn't write a description of how the scene starts and finishes. Uh, basically, we're going for a minute. 64 to 66. I can tell you exactly where it starts, and I can tell you exactly where it finishes. So Ooh, I can finish keep it going, sweetheart. One. I like it. Um, so it starts with the silver blob turning into T-1000, running out of the elevator. And Ooh. it finishes um, just as John Connor is watching the T-1000 run after the car as they're driving away through the smashed back wi uh, back window. Oh, well, he's that about, sounds good. And he's about to throw off the little bit of metal, but not quite yet. It literally just stops there. Little cliffhanger. Oh, 2064. Fire. <laughs> just so, yeah. clean it up now, sweetheart. They are the bookends. So I've watched this clip over quite a few times, waiting for you to do your juice and whatever it is that you do. Juice? Your... There's no juice in this bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you're on fire this evening, Ethan. Oh, this well, I try, sweetheart. I try. Okay, seriously, where's Ethan? It's freaking me out. <laughs> Get out of my chair, Al. Right, sorry, I'm back. Wait. I'll come back later. Yes, thank you, Al. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, come back later. I don't know if it's because this is through Viber or because of headphones, but it could almost sound like there are two different people in the room. The angry Pacino is back. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Carlito. Who are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, first question. Have you watched this clip, Ethan? Of course I haven't, but you know what? Usually we do episodes without any facts at all, and they're the best ones we ever do. And sometimes you watch the clip and deliver absolute dross, so I'm just going to wing it this time. Well, I do have a question for you, but you're not going to be able to answer it for me because you haven't watched the clip. I really want to know what noise they decided to use when the T-1000 gets hit by the bullets of the small handgun that Sarah shoots from the car. They're so, it's like, I can't even, I can't even recreate it. It's like, 
But yeah, I was just thinking, what would they actually have used? Because sometimes when you, when I've seen those kind of behind the scenes or how they made, and they show you how they make some of the sound effects, and it's, it's pretty shocking some of it. So I wonder what they actually had to do. Do you remember those um, pots of goo you get, and the only purpose was to stick your fingers in, and it made a bit of like a fart suction noise. I do, remarkably, yes. It really sounded like you were away from the computer and then all of a sudden you realised there was a question and then you zoomed over to the computer. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, I can uh, hand it over to Gary Rydstrom now, who was the sound effects designer for Terminator 2, uh, which is actually off the Skynet edition uh, DVD. Edition? Cool. Uh, Gary, of course, became famous, well, more famous rather, two years later in 1993 when he created the very famous... Uh, screams roars and like noises and huffs of all the dinosaurs in jurassic park oh, fact attack. <clears throat> mixing an elephant with a beaver gary rides from obviously uh created the t1 t1000 t sorry he's he's good with the t's the t-rex uh roar basically which does actually sadly <laughs> can you imagine the t1000 sound exactly the like t-rex. an elephant what imagine a cross between a t1000 and a tyrannosaurus rex Yes, it would be a liquid metal dinosaur. Jesus Christ. Here's Gary Rydstrom with some information on Terminator 2 sound design. Oh, my God. And, uh, when Jim talked about the sound <laughs> from the beginning, he, he uh, would always talk about things in terms of hyper-reality. This, uh, this is bigger than life. It's not science fiction sound effects. It's not sounds you don't believe are really happening. It sounds that seem organic and real, but... They're bigger than anything you've heard before. It's it, it's sound effects with a lot of testosterone. So uh, yeah, here's the shotgun layer demo coming up. Get down. <laughs> Rifle echo in a canyon. Get down. <laughs> so that's an added sound effect. Here's a cannon noise for the T1000. Get down. So it's a mix of three sounds, basically. Another cannon sped up. Get down. So you've got four sounds now, and composite mix of all four, Get three. Down. All the sounds broken into the smallest components possible. Down here, you know, the footsteps are by themselves. The crashes are by themselves. The ambience is by itself. The different layers are chosen for being exactly the right sound for that layer. So there's a lot of details that go into making something that you then believe has been recorded on the set. How exciting. Tell us more, Gary. If they ever need a, uh, like a, a voice for like a motivational kill yourself take that you listen to when you sleep, that guy should do it. <laughs> Fucking hell, his voice was like, yeah, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and life really is that shit, man. It's well, never I, su I suppose get any better. You might as well reach across to the knife you have on the side and just slit your wrists so that your mum can come in and bring your tea and biscuits and find you dead. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Jesus. I guess, like, if you are, <laughs> if your life is sound effects, you may as well have a voice as boring as a shit sandwich. Your fucking voice should be a sound effect. I've got, I've got an awful radio voice. The sound of, like, the sound voice. of like, my happy joy dying. It hasn't worked out. <laughs> uh, if you want to know what the T-1000, like the noises when he was like breaking apart, when he was covered in liquid nitrogen, it was actually them cracking a frozen lake. And here it comes. So basically it's uh, a mix oh, of glass. It's when you've got headphones on. <laughs> Elliot, what? it's a mix of glass, ice cube trays, and people stamping on the surface of a frozen lake. The T-1000 breaking apart. That's an ice cube tray. Mm. Hasta la vista, baby. Okay, the T-1000 being uh, smashed apart is uh, basically butter melting in a pan when he reforms. Oh, wow. This is someone pouring nails onto the floor when he splits apart and smashes when he blows up. Oh. 
And now we've got butter being melted and someone drinking a milkshake from McDonald's for reforming the liquid metal. Let's go. And now it's squirty cream. Thing is just a, a, a whole series of funneling little sounds into the final mix. You have hundreds and hundreds of tracks. Tell us more, Gary. First get funneled into a premix where you've made some basic choices. And then those premixes go into the final where the music and the sound effects and the dialogue are all Should I go for the bullet or the blade, Gary? <laughs> well, that's all I had. I was just trying to think of something like uh, on, on the lamb, basically. That, uh, that was I, amazing. I thought Gary would actually tell us what... This might be the best what... episode we've ever done. <laughs> Let's not go too far. I love that. That's fucking awesome. I'm so glad that my first point was the sound effects. Bra fucking ve. <laughs> if you were here, dude, I'd high five your face twice. That's yeah. right. You'd be high fiving that girl's snatch tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. I'll be doing no such thing. I feed ponies. That is all. Mm, well, um, <clears throat> that's worse than what I yeah. said. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> what? I'll do do the Martin moves. So you got the scratch. You got the DJ. Yeah, it's more of a visual, and no one can see you, sadly. But if you can actually paint no, pictures. No, but I am of... actually doing it. Sat on my own in my bedroom. <laughs> but there's a mirror over there, so it c I could almost be performing for myself, which is generally what I have to do. Oh, um, sorry. Being a yeah. Anyway, so. Your first fact attack, Ellie, is coming up. Well, kind of. Fact official. attack. <laughs> do you think anyone listens to this show apart from our two listeners? Yes, Josh. <laughs> Thanks for listening, Josh. You, we now we are <laughs> n now we are three. Uh, right, your first fact attack coming out. When the uh, car is reversing out of the uh, subterranean parking garage, garage, and uh, it comes out and breaks through the fence and does that kind of like three sixty turn. Mm -hmm. The stunt driver isn't reversing the car. Did you know that? Go on. No. The stunt driver is actually sat in the boot or the trunk, and his head is sticking out of the kind of <laughs> like the back shelf behind the back seats and between the rear windshield. What the fuck? And as the car comes out over the, the kind of the little mini knoll, the grassy knoll, JFK, the grassy or, the, or, knoll. or the little hill, uh, you can quite plainly see his the head hillock. in the middle of the back window. Yeah, no, I did notice that, but I was thinking. Is that meant to look like John? Because it I is. Noticed... Oh yeah, no, yeah. They've cleverly hidden it, but yeah. Actually, no, well, they I haven't cleverly hidden that... it. It blatantly looks like a man with his head sticking out of the back window. It actually looks well, like a construction like worker's helmet. Fucking... Yeah, it looks very not like a person. Because I actually noticed that when the, at the same time when the car's coming out of the <clears throat> park, <clears throat> car park, and it like does that turn and then it speeds off. Like you can't actually see anyone in the back seat when you see through both the side windows. Well, if anyone wants to actually pinpoint that moment, it's uh, one hour four minutes and fifty three seconds in. So yeah. you'll blatantly see like literally the whole of that. You see Arnold's head or Arnold's uh, replacement and Sarah's, but yeah. there's literally no one on that back seat. Yeah. Throughout that whole scene. So Does yeah, basically, uh, too dangerous for that one shot. Too dangerous it's for a guy lady. driving forwards, but um, in reverse. You see it as well when he does the reverse, but it's uh, it looks like John's head at that point. It does. Obviously, it famous. Does. This pastiche was like obviously taken in <laughs> sent up, if you will, in the Simpsons when uh, yes. Homer chases <laughs> terrified Flanders and his family with two golf clubs in his arms. <laughs> Which sadly you can't include in the show because fucking Fox went. As, I like, know, dude. I tried to look for that clip too, and I just couldn't fucking find it. There must you, be a way. Why, There's gotta be a way. I don't get why people do that because, like, you know, it's I not know, licensed. It's people put worst. those clips on, but it shows a love for the show, and it also permeates the popular culture that and also, people can see it, and Fox, it advertises your show. Fox's shows are so fucking big. It's not like they'd actually lose out on any money, like any kind of licensing or anything. Like the it's shows. Free that advertising. They do, so, just a few is like Simpsons, fucking Family Guy, American Dad. Now, I love Family Guy and American Dad. American Dad more because it's really weird and bizarre. But, yeah. like, it's so difficult. Over the years, there have been so many different sites where they have these videos, and then they work for a few months, and then you come to it, and they fucking shut it down. And it's like, for fuck's sake. Like you said, it just carries it on and keeps fans, like, following it and shit. I don't know. It's really fucking annoying. Fuck you, Fox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this show does not re uh, re reflect the uh, opinions and views of Ellie Fitzgerald Fox. 
Oh God, no! Please employ <laughs> me in one of your films. I I represent only myself. <laughs> uh, right, when the T one thousand is actually jumping onto the back of the car with his like golf club arms, <laughs> uh, the sadly the side view shot is uh, mired, if you will, by James Cameron's mm. penchant for using the uh, r- fucking what is it rear projection stuff, which yeah. is kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying. I was going to ask you actually if this was an actual, like, if the whole scene was like the actual setting, or whether there was any kind of map paintings. Well, no, it's. I mean, any kind of side view with Arnold driving, you see it probably after this scene as well when they're driving away and he goes, "I see everything." Mm. Uh, it's the rear projection as well, like when they're driving forward or backwards. It's got the appropriate shot, of course, of going down the road or driving away from the road. But it's just, it just looks doesn't look that great, sadly. Ethan, you're a smart man. God, no, but go on. <laughs> how did they? D- how did they make it work so that uh, Robert Patrick has metal arms? And obviously, that's not real glass. They have that special glass that smashes really easy. How would he like? How would he have had Candy his arms? Candy glass. And those- <laughs> how would he have had those? <laughs> oh my god! You remember the other day when we saw that dude walking that huge like plate of glass across the road? And you're like, this is just out of a cartoon. You never see shit like this. Yeah, there was two guys. Was it two guys or one guy? But they were carrying like a giant sheet of glass across between two two parked cars. He was in the car. Someone was going to fucking run him down, but he didn't. Fucking do-gooder. Yeah. Actually, uh, Mythbusters did uh, a piece on that. Like all it, it was in movies when people drive through like glass. Yeah. Of how dangerous it is. I'll actually put the clip on uh, the notes to the show below. But uh, they basically okay. did a pane of glass... Oh my god, Ethan, that was so hot. A pane of glass. Oh, baby, keep talking. A pane of glass, why? Because you're saying it properly. No, no, it's glass. There's no R oh, in the word. Oh, you lost it. I'm you sorry, but there's no it. R in the word. That's Southerners fine. don't have it right all the time, you know. Babe, when you next go to an audition, say glass, not grass, and you'll get the fucking job. <laughs> Thank you. And... Uh, <laughs> Would you like to know, Ellie, the driver who was driving the car backwards? Yes. Okay, right. There's a bit of a delay. Uh, Bobby Brown. Fuck off. As in Whitney Houston's husband. Not my prerogative, Bobby Brown. He's a white gentleman and he's not a pop singer. He's actually a white uh, stunt coordinator, uh, assistant director and actor. His name's Bob Brown or Bobby Brown. Bob. Bob. Bob, such a funny name, Bob. Well then, Bob. Bob. Welcome on, Bob. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah he's Ethan, d- you didn't answer my question. Go on. Like, how does Robert? How how has Robert got these like metal arms? How is he smashing through glass? Because obviously his hand is inside some sort of metal casing or something. But how has he done? Well, that? yeah, basically, he's where almost like if you're a stilt walking person, you know, a bloody festival or some bullshit like that. Not yeah. Bloody festivals, as you can tell. Uh. He's got his arm in two kind of essentially road cones, if you will. And uh, they just blend the uh, silicon rubber onto a regular shirt, which he just puts on. Because uh, when he when he fought, like gets shot off the back mm-hmm. and he's like doing his... Well, that's a stuntman. When the stuntman's doing that, yeah. like as he goes to get up, you actually see the, the metal arm bend ever so slightly. Mm. So, yeah, I was wondering, A, what it was and B... If it, because it, because when he's actually rolling along the floor, you actually hear the. Uh, well, then again, that's probably a sound effect, isn't it? Yes, Ellie, it's a sound effect. <laughs> they wouldn't put real metal arms. One, because the weight would be too great. It's all makeup and smoke and mirrors. They did it. They did it in Simpsons. Just like they I told real, you when uh, golf clubs, right? when Sophie rang from the set of the Bastard Executioner on FX the other day and was like, "Oh, I nearly stepped on a fake rock." Yeah, it's all fake. Just like you. <laughs> Anyway. Anyway, back to the time. Uh, Bobby Brown, uh, of course. He's wor- uh, <laughs> recently worked on Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, uh, The Lone Ranger, Captain America the Winter Soldier, the best Marvel movie. And uh, mm. he's worked on Predators, the third Predator film by Robert Rodriguez. Kind of the third Predator, it's not really connected. X-Files, Alien Nation, the TV series, Seven, Last Man Standing, Child's Play 2, which connects us again, once again, I think, to the James Bolger case. That might have been uh, Charles Play 3, though. Jesus. Uh, his first film he worked on was Girls Just Want to Have Fun in 1985, I think. <laughs> I think. 
that is Sarah Jessica Parker and uh, Biff Yeager. Great name. Biff Yeager. And Helen Hunt. <laughs> Not so great. Biff Yeager. So when the T-1000 hooks onto the back of the car and gets dragged along the ground. Yes. Like, what was that in real life? Hooked onto Who... the back of the car? Yeah. So that was that a stunt man? Well, no. When it's clearly when you is see Robert Patrick, who's on the back of the the trunk, if you will. The sorry, the yeah, the trunk. Uh, it's rear projection again. with just Robert Patrick smashing the sugar glass windows. No, what I mean is, is when he first jumps for the car when they first drive out. Yeah. And he hangs onto the back, and then he climbs up. Yeah. What I mean is, when he's on the back first, he gets dragged along the ground before he climbs up onto the back. Well, that's quite what? clearly can be seen as a dummy. I was going to say, is that a dummy? Yeah, it looks like a completely fake got... person. That's a, that's a fake person. Didn't you want to walk around town with like a fake baby or something, just so you could like throw it under like trains to see? No, what no, I do? said get a real doll for the obvious first reason, and then oh, right, yeah. the other ones are like fake suicides and pushing women out of cars and off buildings and stuff. Because <laughs> deep down, that's what we all want to do. <laughs> no, deep down, Ethan, that's what you want to do to your mum. Oh, how, how and your Oedipal. many your many previous victims and future victims all fall to the same fate that actually you just want to murder your mother over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, when uh, John grabs the piece, <laughs> the hook, if you will, of one of the T-1000's arms and shoots him off the back of the car, mm. one thing that I always never understood was when John pulls it off, two things really, when John pulls it off the back of the car, one, why the T-1000 doesn't turn into John because it's now sampled him through touch. Yeah. Or... The T-1000 piece in the back of the car wouldn't let him touch it because its mission was still be to kill him, even though there's only a little bit of it at there and then to do yeah. the job. But it's mass. Yeah, so it should have been leaping really... about the car trying to like stab him to death or shoot through his chest or something. Yeah, that's a good point. Stan Winston and his team uh, tried a lot of ways to make the piece of the T-1000 hit the road after John throws it. They even uh, tried uh, using a silicon breastplate and having it uh, chrome-plated. <laughs> a chrome-plated silicon breastplate. <laughs> you can chrome plate by the way you did, did you know that no you can chrome plate anything apparently Whoa. even silicon let's, breast let's, implants let's test this <laughs> let's chrome plate your penis yeah 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 sell that to Soho <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe fucking Boris Johnson's like on this mission to like clean up Soho and he's like closing like sex shops and stuff. Who That's cares? That's so fucked up, man. Because it's like Soho history. It is, but by the same token, if you when you can download Man Having Sex with a Horse onto your phone as a twelve year old boy, there's no real need for Soho anymore. So, <gasps> sex is less swept see, under the rug. You're, or, see, this is the thing though, Ethan. We're watching this and we're like, oh my god, the machines one day. Like I think you're on the machine side because you are the internet. You would so easily slip into that world if if you had a choice of living in a virtual reality where you could like sit in a little pod and be like linked into a computer. You'd so much rather live your life that way. Are you, you referring <laughs> to me putting on that article about sex robots shortly to be invented? And within fifty years, you'll be able no. to. Okay. No, because that's you in reality having sex with a robot. I've done it. Well, I've done it a few times so far. We're not in the future yet. <laughs> You've dated a few as well. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. Many. Oh, yes. yes. Tell us about it, Pacino. <laughs> oh, women, don't get me started. <laughs> but can you do like a Pacino but robot Pacino? Oh, really? Don't get me started. <laughs> oh, my God, Ethan. That's amazing. Keep going. What else would you like me to say? Hoo-ha. Hoo-ha. <laughs> Silence on the radio. We love it. <laughs> now that's fucking acting. <laughs> uh, as a side note to the show, I mean, um, the listeners may or may not want to know this, but you uh, sent me weirdly two topless photos of yourself today. Why was that? <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> <laughs> um, I was bored at work and wanted a reaction out of you. And I got one. And it was, you need to change your photo mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that's why. Yeah, it because I'm a woman and I can. It distracts, sadly. <laughs> it distracts. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, yes, that's why. Yeah, Is you do okay? pull the same fo face in photos. It's kind of just be yourself, dude. Um, every girl does. I don't know. You do this kind of specific, like, look at my trying to show your teeth in that kind of like she or shall re remain nameless way. All girls do it, but it's just kind of just, just relax, man. Be yourself. Oh, God, I hate it when you say that. There's a pair a of cans in the picture. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be noticing my mouth. But sadly, we did. But sadly, we've. <laughs> I, I, dear listeners, I receive stuff like this all the time, so it's it's quite, it's not shocking to me anymore. <laughs> it's not meant to shock. I just want to be accepted. <laughs> I might make it. No, the, I, I might make accepted. it the art for the show. <laughs> oh God, we've only done that once. It didn't bring in any listeners. It Let's didn't do it again. <laughs> well, if we leave didn't you, leave... burn him. We didn't burn him. We'll leave your face out this time. <laughs> Come on then, fucking put your bollocks where your mouth is. What? <laughs> if you could do that, yeah, you'd never fucking go outside. <laughs> I really do now. We should make we should make your dick some of the fucking fan art. Equal representation, Ethan. He could, but I mean the ratio, <laughs> the aspect ratio of a YouTube video, sadly, is sixteen by nine. <laughs> And it, I couldn't get it big enough to uh, fit that. I was going to say, your dick wouldn't be able to feel like a YouTube box screen. It literally wouldn't. It wouldn't. It's like a piece it's of... Like, it'd, be able to, it'd be able to feel it one way, but not the other. It's wilted like an asparagus. <laughs> we call it the strawberry. <laughs> oh, my God. Fucking front projection, Ellie. I'm sick of it. <laughs> oh, that's why the picture looks like shit. Sorry, I've been looking at an awful picture playing this clip and uh Oh there we go, that's better. <laughs> oh. oh my god, I've laughed so much on this episode, my stomach actually hurts. Oh, it's gonna work out. <laughs> and scene. Uh is there anything else you want to say about this particular scene? I think we've covered quite a lot. We have <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> uh yeah no it's uh that's it's uh been an interesting episode so i'm just fucking going to pieces distracted, here. as always you're always somewhere else ethan we can never have all of you i know i'm like dark man <laughs> i'm everywhere and nowhere i belong to no man or woman <laughs> <laughs> okay everyone uh thank you so much for listening i'll uh just <laughs> i'll just get off the mic now for a second because uh Okay, what's going on? Oh, Al, are you going to sign us off? Oh, yeah. Keep it going, sweetheart. I like it. <laughs> it's so good of you to uh, grace us. Tune in what? tomorrow when we'll have Company. episode 34. Hua. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. Baby. Baby. What do